These PIR sensors are just what you need to build your own security monitoring system, but they can be a real hassle to configure. Let's jump right in and avoid going crazy trying to get them to work properly. First of all, I'd recommend buying good quality sensors. I really like this AZ delivery one. It's well made, well labelled and has the optional jumper to change the mode. More on that jumper later, assuming your PS sensor has one. It also has documentation, although the English is really just a jumble of random words. It's really difficult to understand. Compare this one with the sensor I bought from AliExpress, which was cheaper, but I'm not even sure if it works properly. I bought this DHT11 temperature sensor at the same time, and it no longer works at all. So this is a nice diagram I found of the sensor. So yours should look similar to this. You may or may not have this jumper here. You almost certainly will have these two adjusters here. Uh, more on these later. Finally, there are three pins here. One is for power, one is for ground, and the middle one usually is the output one. Something really important to consider is that sometimes the power and the ground are on the different side, but almost always the output is the middle pin. So definitely check on your specific peer sensor. If your sensor didn't come with documentation, then all you can do is to pop off the Fresnel lens like this. So once you've popped it off, sometimes you'll find that there are labels on the sensor board on this side. So mine are labeled here. Now let's talk about the jumper. Yours might be labeled or not labeled. You might not even have a jumper at all, as is the case with my cheap AliExpress one. So if they're labeled, you might see H or L labels or both. It's wrong to assume L is on the edge closest to the adjustable screws. Here's an example I found online where the jumpers are in the opposite orientation to my particular peer sensor. So when H is selected, the sensor will output high when it's repeatedly triggered. When L is selected, it will only output high when the sensor is triggered. I've put mine on H. It's probably a better setting if you want to make a security camera. The sensor has two potentiometers you can adjust with a small screwdriver. Usually the one on the left facing us is to adjust sensitivity. On mine, I've turned it clockwise as far as it will go. Apparently it will sense up to seven meters or three meters if you turn it anti-clockwise as far as it will go. Note that the distance isn't really standardized with different peer sensors, so the actual distance will depend on which peer sensor you've bought. The other potentiometer is used to change the delay. I've turned mine clockwise as far as it will go, which is 5 seconds on mine. Turning it the other way will delay to 5 minutes. Don't use this delay if you're testing it, it will drive you crazy. But it is a useful setting if you want to build a security light which stays on for a while after activity is detected. Now let's talk about how to test the peer sensor, and I had real problems when I was trying to get my device up and running. First of all, the sensor doesn't always work reliably if it's too close to other electronics. You could try using tin foil, but really the best thing I've found is to use longer cables. It's also important to note that it detects changes in infrared. It doesn't detect motion unless the motion changes the pattern of infrared radiation. You will probably encounter issues testing in a sunny room or in a room where you're using a convection heater. I think this is the main problem I had when I was first trying to test mine because it's winter and my room heater is on all day and night. Also, if your desk is quite small or you're using a laptop, then your computer's fan might also be blowing out heat. I found the best way to test is to put a cup or bowl over the sensor. Bear in mind the sensor has a cooldown period, so don't be too hasty. It also takes a few seconds to start up and calibrate itself. If you have any other problems with the PS sensor, then drop a comment below. Thanks for watching.